Welcome to another episode of Twin Peaks Outdoors. Bit of a spur of a, a moment, uh, campuses. We're both currently on holiday, um, on the run up to Christmas, and uh, we've been dying to do a camp under canvas for a while. And the weather hasn't been great, as per usual, but we looked uh, at the forecast last night. And there's a bit of a weather window because yesterday was appalling. Apparently tomorrow we got some high winds and rain coming again. And it said it was gonna clear about one o'clock. It's about 12 o'clock now. And well it's not great. It's not rain at the moment, but the wind is picking up. You can probably see the trees blowing around. So the plan is to go up to Cribbin on a, a favourite little spot of ours we did before, the little ledge. Well, I'll say little, it's quite big. Um, and do a camp on there. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon and you'll be notified of any future adventures. just come to this gate to go through and I look at this sign um, it's basically about keeping your dog on a lead um, obviously there's livestock in the area but that picture there that dog it looks like he's being strangled you see his tongue hanging out was being pulled back what's that about right so we've got to follow this path down and back up and I think there's a little river down there or something and it sounds like it's pretty running quite fast if you look over that area there um, we've camped there a couple of times it's a disused reservoir and it's called the Nayav and the Nayav in English means hole so it's a whole reservoir that's disused and there's a fair few camping spots over there amongst the trees and uh, you, could all, you, well, you could probably put a hammock there as well, I would have thought. Good bit of hammock uh, camping opportunities and tenting as well. Gotta watch where you're walking here, these rocks are slippery as hell. The weather's not the best, but just nice to get back out again and get some exercise and when we get up there we're not going to see a whole lot unless the um, cloud clears but we're gonna see what it's like when we get up there we've always got a plan B if it's too windy so although the aim at the moment is to still camp up there that's what we set out to do and hopefully that's what we will do we're going to be using our MSR access one tents tonight and I've bought four extra MSR cam ring guidelines and some extra sticks and I will be attaching them to my tent later and I'll show you them and the sticks I bought as well where we live in the UK in Wales um, we live on, on the the path of the jet stream and it seems like whatever weather or whatever storm that comes from America in, ends our way um, we have more of our fair share of storms, wind and rain and it's pretty depressing to be honest with you and uh, you know like Central Europe, Switzerland, Austria, Germany, whatever, Poland they'll get snow, cold conditions which I'd much prefer that than living here with all this rain 
But if you can look around, it's like a river running down this Roman road. I just get fed up with it. Um, I think everyone does, it's just depressing, you know. But if you let the weather pull you off, you, just you wouldn't go anywhere, you'd be stuck in the house every day. So we just got to make the best of it. Slowly make it our way up cribbing. And if I turn the camera around, you got the town of Brecon in the distance. We got some clear, clear ish skies now, which is good. We're headed up there and across. If I pan round, you got the sun trying to come out. But the weather is a whole lot better now than what it was earlier, so yeah, we're quite happy about that. It's a bit windy, but hopefully we can get the tents up and we'll be fine. Summit of Cribbin is just up there. And if I pan round, you've got Penavan on the right, Cornley on the left, and as you can see it now as the cloud is slowly disappearing. So, like I said earlier, we're going to hike to the summit and then drop down slightly over the other side. Here is the summit of Cribbin. Again, again, seven nine five meters above sea level. We're not having constant wind, but it's just gusts. Very gusty day. Well, this is our camp spot for the night. It's fairly flat. We've got some gusty winds coming across. Um, we haven't reused these tents in, uh, in high winds yet, so it's going to be a test for those tonight. Um, just got the down jacket on because I'm absolutely freezing. Um, so yeah, we're going to put the tents up. And then, get, um, and then get warm, I think. Have a cup of coffee and warm up a bit. The tents are up. This side of this tent. It's my tent. Like I said earlier, I bought these four extra guidelines. Proper MSR guidelines with the cam rings. So I bought four of them. I'm going to attach all them now. Because there's some spare guy loops there, so I'm going to tie all them on each one. And I've bought, as well, four MSR cyclone sticks. And I'm going to peg the extra four guidelines out with these. So that should give me some extra stability in the night. Especially in this wind, because it's absolutely blowing it good. There's a van over there, slowly cleaning. So I'll put all these guidelines on now and I'll finish pegging the tent out. So it's the last of the cam ring guidelines Mark's putting on and then he's got these sticks. Cyclone sticks. Cyclone sticks. Ten inches long. That should hold it up tonight. Just came a bit further up. So we just show you where our tents are pitched for the night. Obviously you can see Mark's orange tent, sticks out like a sore thumb. It's a great pitch but it's bloody windy up here. So uh, I'm hoping we survive the night to be honest. And the tents. But it's going to be a good test for those because uh, we haven't tested them in wind this high before so I hope it's going to be good. I've got all my bed set up. Tonight I'm using the 
Firma Rest Neo Air X Firm inflatable pad. I've got my Leviathan down bag, four season bag. I've also got my Nemo Philo inflatable pillow. You've probably seen that before. Going to be using that again tonight. So yeah, I'm going to be nice and nice and snug in here tonight. And I can finally feel my fingers again. They are absolutely bitter earlier. Oh, it's freezing, but yeah, warming up now. And I'm, I think I'm gonna get a jet boil on the go now and make a coffee. Have a listen to this wind, guys. These tents are going to have a right old test tonight. <laughs> right old test. And it stops. It's weird. Starting up again. I can't see me having much sleep tonight. I'm in my bag, I've got my down booties on. Um, I'm gonna have some food soon. What I got tonight is uh, Expedition Foods Spaghetti Carbonara. I can't wait to tug into that. And I've got a, a pot noodle as well. It's going dark, you know. Gee whiz. This wind is absolutely insane. Mark just showed one of his um, guy lines pop off. And uh, two of them. Two, was it? Yeah, two of them. We're just going around now, trying to make a couple of bush fixes, just getting repaired for the night because. Uh, this wind's crazy. It's crazy, man. Come off. I've had to retire on temporary. Um, just checking all my guidelines. <laughs> they all seem pretty good. Just hoping they hold off for the night, that's all. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there's a, a mountain rescue helicopter um, circling round. Just over the edge, a big bowl goes round. It's just going round and round on there. At one point, I thought it was a land up on. Up by here, it was, it was, that, it was that close. They're either looking for someone or they're in training or something, but it's probably 
some he lost a bit of whatever, they can't find them, but um, they've been out a while. So whoever is out there, found safe. They're still there. Just saw a light coming down from Panavan across the way and um, could be mountain rescue on foot as well. Yeah, something's going on. Me and Simon are confined to our tents now. That's normally what happens in winter camps. It gets dark early, so there's not a lot we can do really. Anyway, I'm gonna have um, some food. I've already had um, some proper camping food in a pot noodle. I had that about an hour ago. Just show you what else I'm going to have. I've got a Wayfarer all day breakfast. I'll put the um, jet boil on now. Get some water on the go. And I've even got a dessert tonight. I've got, got an Expedition Foods custard with apple. Never tried that before. Give that a go. The breakfast is in the jet boil. Just going to bring that to a rolling boil and leave it in there for a bit to heat up and then that's pretty much it. Whenever you're cooking in tents, make sure it's well ventilated. Either by leaving the door open or if it's in the winter like we are now, unzip it from the top to let all the, all the fumes out. Very important that is. I think it's time to eat. I've had these before, they're, they're, they are quite nice. Nice this. Nice sausage and beans. Lovely. I'm going to have my dessert now. Apple and custard. And what I'm going to do, the water I use for my all day breakfast, I'm just going to heat it up now and then tip it in there. So I've, I've used the water for both meals then. Take out the oxygen pouch. No idea how much, where the fill level is. I'll just guess, I'll tip a bit in there and then see what it's like. I can always add a bit more after. My apple and custard is, I think it's done. Never had this before so I'll give it the taste test and I'll give you my score out of 10. I'll give that a solid 7 out of 10. Yeah, I like that. Nice. Expedition food. Don't know if there's much more to do now apart from lie in my bag, have a can, and watch the walls cave in on my tent all night. Just hope I don't wake up to um, a snap pole. Don't know what's worse, this or Kaiser Idris. <laughs> we are going to sign off now and go to sleep. If anything happens in the night, I'll. Um, I'll try and film it for you. I don't know why I got a funny feeling went in for a quite a quite an eventful night with this wind. I'm hoping um, yeah, I'm hoping 
I was tense, I stood in one piece in the morning, but the wind is crazy. It's like it'll calm down and then all of a sudden, big gusts of wind like it just and you can see the size of the tent caving in. But hopefully it'll be fine. And um, we'll get a decent night's sleep. Anyway, I don't see you before. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Ten to twelve. Oh, I think we went to sleep about ten, and the wind is—it's <laughs> beyond the joke now. It's like I haven't even had two hours sleep, and it is wild. It got to the point like what woke me up? The pole at the back down here bent this way and whacked me on the edge and that's what woke me up that was a shock to the system so I don't know what we're going to do we're going to I don't think we're going to bail because it's still pitch black outside and I don't really want to walk back to the car in this So we're going to have to, I don't know, probably hunker down for a few hours, try and get some more sleep, if at all possible, and then pack up and get the hell out of Dodge. Jesus. A wild night on cribbing. I can see that again. That is fierce. Uh, it's about three o'clock now. I just just woke up with a horrendous wind. The wind changes changed on from this direction. It's coming from this direction, and um, basically I had to hold the tent the whole tent together because it was bending straight against my face. That was scary. That was really scary. I was. I haven't experienced anything like that in camping before. But I actually hold hold the tent to stop it. Blowing in, which is unbelievable. <sighs> Gee whiz. <coughs> we got about three, maybe four hours to ride this out since they get back down. Because it's just not letting up. It's not letting up. If anything, it's getting worse. I reckon it's, about, it's got to be at least 30 mile hour winds, maybe more. So I've had to go back outside and we tensed all my guidelines because this one had come out on the side, come off the peg. Yeah, but that wasn't good. The tent haven't broken or anything, there's no snap poles. 
everything seems to be in order, like, but it's just bent, the whole thing just bent in. It was coming against my face like this, I think I just hold the tent there. <laughs> scary. That was scary, that was scary. Just woke it up, seven o'clock. It's madness. That's what the wind just did to my tent, it just folded right down. Folded right down. Unbelievable. Crazy. I'm not sure if you can hear me. We packed up all the rucksacks inside the tents now. We're gonna take one tent down, take the other tent down, and we're gonna go off the mountain. We're all packed up. No trace left. So where Simon's tent was. So my tent was. I'll see you back in the car. We are back uh, down from the mountain now, back in the car. And I tell you what, the what a, what a wild night that was. That is hands down the, the windiest camp we have ever done by far but those MSR access ones they held it pretty well they bend they, they don't break well, and we you know they get a bit of bad press those tents but I tell you what they were they were awesome they'd done the job and that's all you can ask of them really anyway we're gonna do um, a couple of um, tent reviews on the MSR access ones in the future <coughs> so look out for them and if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified of any future videos. Anyway, from me and Simon, hope you enjoyed that adventure and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Adios.